Huh? Yeah. All right. How do you use a compliment? Well, just like I said before, the compliment of true is false. The compliment of 65 cents to a dollar is 35 cents to a dollar. So if I ask you what the compliment of The probability of kings in a deck of cards is what's the complement? What's the complement of drawing a king out of a deck of cards? What's the complement of that? No, not numbers. What's the complement of it as far as probability? Probability of not drawing a king. And that's why I think we left off talking about guilty and not guilty. Okay, you can't. In, in probability, and there's one there's one example that we do in probability. It's about the uh, roulette wheel. And you know what a roulette wheel is? That's where you spin it around and you like through the bar marble and the marble falls on a number. There's odd and then there's not odd. <coughs> even or not even. You don't say even or odd. Okay? The reason is there's a couple of spaces on the roulette wheel that's neither odd or what? Even. So you can't count those as odd and you can't count them as even. So you count them as not even or not odd depending on what you're asking for. So you need to get... One of the things about probability that you need to think about is what's the correct wording. And that's why... I kind of said something when y'all said innocent the other day because that is not the complement of guilty. The complement of guilty is not guilty. Okay? It's not innocent. You don't so to do that. So get in the habit of thinking like this. The complement of the probability of drawing a king is the probability of not drawing a king. <coughs> Some people may say, well, that's the probability of drawing a queen, a jack, a ten, an ace, a nine. Yeah, but you don't want to calculate all that. Just take this away from one. So, if I ask you, what is the probability of, of picking a king, you'll say four over 52. If I ask you for the probability of not picking a king, you would say what? 48 over what? 52. <coughs> and that's the complement. What makes up the whole? The whole is 52. Not one, but now the whole is 52. And now, if you change this to a decimal, somebody tell me what that decimal is. It's 1 over 13, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which is, I have no idea, but point zero something. Zero what? Point zero. All right, that's good. Zero 08. Then what is the complement of point zero 08? Point nine 0.92. That's when it turns into a dollar. Okay? The complement turns into... When you turn that fraction into a <coughs> decimal, that's when it goes to the scale of zero to one. Okay, so this is the complement of this, and this is the complement of this. And that's how you use the complement. There's also another question that you're going to see in the future. And it's going to be something about an alarm clock. Or something about a house. I can't remember. But it, and what they're asking you to do is saying, what is the probability of at least one? I think. Or something like that. And the whole gist of the question is that you can spend your time taking the probability of 3 plus the probability of 4 plus the probability of 5 plus the probability of 6 plus the probability of 7 all the way up to 13, or you can just take 0 or take 1 and subtract it from 1, or the probability of 1 and subtract it from 1, and that's your answer. So that's the complement. All right, so make sure you understand the whole reasoning behind complement. <coughs>
question on that. Now, remember the other day, we, when y'all came to class, we, uh, no idea what I just did. we talked about finding the probability of different things. Uh, what is the probability of, there's a, there's a couple, they have three babies. Um, what is the probability of it being two girls? All right, this is a problem where you have to construct a sample space. All right? Now, the first sample space is either going to be boy, 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 or the first of the sample space is either going to be boy, 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 or it's going to be what? Girl, 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 because that's the easiest one to start from. The last one is going to be boy, 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 or you start with girl, girl, girl. So, girl, 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 boy, boy, boy. And now you have to list the different ones. Now these type problems are not like the card problems. Card problems and the die problems and the coin problems, those are problems that are real simple because you know the sides, you don't have to construct a sample space. But with this one you have to construct a sample space. So let's go with girl, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, Boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, and boy, and girl, boy, boy. I can't stand doing this. It really irritates me. Let's see if that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. Girl, girl, boy. Oh, boy, girl, girl. Do I have boy, girl, girl? No, I don't. Dang hole. Put it right here. Boy, girl. <coughs> All right, I just know there's a. All right, now pick the ones that have two girls. Well, we all can count. So there's one. There's two. There's three. Any more? No, this is three. Any more twos? So the probability. Uh, two girls is going to be what? No more sneaking. And that comes out to be some decimal. What about the probability of no girls? Or <coughs> of not having two girls? That'd be what? Five out of eight. eight. You're not supposed to be counting. You're supposed to be looking at this and saying... Well, 5 minus 3 is 8. I mean, 8 minus 3 is 5. And that's your company. Don't start thinking. <laughs> if you start thinking with some of these, you're going to end up doing something real complicated when all you got to do is what? Something real simple. Complement. Now, what if I ask, what is the probability of having three girls? Well, that's not this. Probability of having three girls is what? One out of eight. Probability of having two boys is three out of eight. Probability of having whatever, whatever, three boys is one over eight. And then, but this is totally different from what I'm asking here and probability of three girls, probability of three guys. That, that's totally different than this. You come up with this after you've come up with this. Now that's a sample space. I could give you one uh, from the other day's lecture that says, what is the probability of rolling a seven on a die? I put this on a test. 30 people took the test. Five people got it wrong. What's the answer? Huh? <coughs> I can't hear you. One over six? Nope. Oh, zero over six? Zero. Why? <coughs> there ain't no seven on a die. <coughs> you got to think. What did I tell you about probability? Is it the math that gets people? No. It's the context of the questions. You've got to read the questions. Now, some of you guys in here, y'all don't do that very well. Read what? 
Directions. You don't need directions because you already know it all. Okay? How many of you women have been on a trip with a guy and y'all go around in circles because you're lost? It's, less, it's happening less and less because of GPS. But heck, some guys have GPS in their car and they don't even use it. Or you go 50 miles out of your way. Yeah, that's true. And then there's poor old Johnny. Johnny waiting for Santa Claus. And Johnny gets up the next morning and Santa Claus has been there, but Santa Claus, Miss Santa Claus goes, what are all these? And Mr. Santa Claus goes, those are what? Extra parts. Meanwhile, Johnny's in the ditch. <laughs> Why? Because front wheel fell off. Because Mr. Santa Claus didn't need what? He didn't need directions. He just looked at the picture. Okay, so guys, you're going to have to read the question. That question gets people all the time. <coughs> so you have two types of questions with probability, really three types. You have, and this is 4.2, you have a probability with coins, cards, and die which are pretty simple because all you got to do is think of the sides or think of the cards or think of that. And then you got your sample space, probability of <coughs> girl, 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 and that includes a sample space that you have to construct just so, I mean, nobody walks around thinking of girl, 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 boy, boy. You got to write them down because nobody ever thinks about stuff like that. And then the third type question you got in 4.2 is a complement question. And the complement question would say, just like we did a while ago with the uh, two girls and not two girls, it'll say what is the probability of not or none or nan, in other words, not having the first part. Okay? So we good on 4.2 or whatever section that was. All right, what's 4.3 and 4.4? 4. 4? Well, 4.3, I think, or I might get it bass accurate from each other. 4.3, I think, is additive rule. Is that right? Okay. Now, how do you know if you're using the additive rule? Well, the additive rule will have a word in the sentence at the last part that will say the probability of this, let me get my, let me get this pulled up. Nope. <coughs> there it is. Uh, what page is 4.43 on? Somebody tell me. 149. Huh? 149. It'll say the probability of this or the probability, um, and or or. Is it or or? I think it's or. Well, they have it in there somewhere. You're going to see the word or whenever you use the additive rule. They used to have a big block and it used to say the word or. Oh, and. and. Okay? So and is the key word. When you see the word and, you're going to be dealing with the additive rule. And there is the additive rule. Now, I'm not going to explain it like that. <coughs> All right? So if you want to look at it like that, then that's fine. I'm going to explain it to you in a different way. I'm still trying to find the word and, but it's not. They used to, uh... no, there it is. I thought it was or, right there. There it is. There it is, or. So I'm not crazy. I thought it was or. All right. So the word or is the key word. So take your handy dandy marker and put or. And it's only going to say it in the last part of the question. In other words, Jody and Susie are sitting on a wall and both of them are overweight and one of them falls down. 
what is the probability of Jody or Susie falling off the wall? Okay? The last part is going to tell you if you're dealing with or or and. Now, when you're doing homework in 4.3, all of them are going to say what? Or. And when you're doing with homework in 4.4, all of them are going to be saying and. But when you get to the test, that's when you have to really look at that last sentence. Okay? Now, there's one thing that I'm going to write in red. <coughs> Dang old, if I write it in red, what do you think that means? It's important. Dang old important. What the heck is this? Okay, financial aid overview. Okay, y'all go to that. Whatever. You need to. Because I don't know what that is. Huh? It was yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Well, they didn't come into my class. I probably thought I'd run them off. All right, the important thing always subtract the overlap. It's as simple as that. Always subtract the overlap. Star, exclamation point, red cloud around it. That means this is very important. Because if you don't subtract the overlap, you will get it wrong. The first thing you do when you're dealing with or, or dealing with the additive rule, is try, if possible, Try to create a table. Try to create a table. Most of the time, they're going to give you a table. Meaning the book, the test, the homework. They're going to give you a table. If they give you a table, then the problem is a whole lot easier than if you have to create a table. But I tell students, the easiest way to do the additive problems is to create a table. Once you create a table, you highlight. I, I don't know how to spell highlight. Do you spell it H-I-L-I-T-E or do you spell it H-I-G-H-L-I-G-H-T or do you... It's G-H-T. Well, then why do I see it highlight on <coughs> some of the highlighters? It goes H-I and then it says L-I-T-E. This is another conspiracy and it's all Bushy's fault. Everything's Bushy's fault. Y'all are learning. And when Hillary's president, it's going to be Bush's fault then. Even more so. Highlight the parts. Highlight the parts, and then after you highlight the parts, look for the overlap. Look for overlap. You may not have one. If you don't have one, then you don't need to what? You don't need to worry about it. Simple as that. Okay, now so far, the three type problems that you're going to have on your test are the probability of coin, blah, 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 probability of baby, 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 girl, 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 whatever, sample space, and then a complement. This type problem is going to be something to the effect of a table, or you can make a table, and then you're going to highlight this, and you're going to highlight this, and if there's an overlap, you're going to subtract it. So let's go ahead and try one. Let me pull one out of the book because they usually have some tables in the book. What are you doing, Banner? Don't be yawning. Don't be yawning in here. That just, that cuts me deep. <coughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with Banner. Probably out drinking and riding around in that Toyota all night drunk. Don't even have a Toyota. It's that old twin. There's a compliment. We're talking about the compliment again. Okay, they didn't even give y'all a problem? Wait a minute, hold on. 
Did I stick a section about compliments? Huh, I didn't even give you an example of a. I'm sorry, just hold on a minute. They usually, in the other book, they had the one in the margin. <coughs> I guess I got it there. Okay, there we go. I skipped it. Oh, I did. Okay. All right. <coughs> Take a look at this example. This is about losers. All right. It says pre employment drug screening results. I want you to tell me the probability of a positive test result and a, and a person uses drugs. Okay? The probability of... Go ahead and write the table down. You need to write it down. You don't have to write it word for word. Just put subject uses drugs, 44 to 6. <coughs> subject uses drugs and put an X through it, 90 and 860. Put a positive up here and put a negative here. That's it. You ain't got to write all that crap. Okay. Makes you look over. I know when to say that, when not to say it. It's about like the pregnant. Oh, you, you. I didn't know you were pregnant. You gotta watch out when you do. <coughs> yeah, someone went to the gym yeah, last week. Do right? not say that to a woman. Yeah, Even okay. another woman should not say that to another woman. A woman at the gym like a month or two ago asked me what I was having. I'm like, I'm not pregnant. Exactly. I don't even that is just, you don't you don't walk up to somebody and say that. Unless you're really that Unless you just really want somebody, somebody to be pissed off at you. And that will do it. And guys, there's two questions you never answer. Okay? One question is, does this make me look fat? And the other question is, if I die, would you remarry? It's a beautiful day outside is the answer. Do not answer those two questions. Because all they're waiting to do is pounce on your butt. You got it, Mr. Robinson? You write that down, you better write it down. All right, man, I'll bring it down. All right, so, <coughs> what do you do? Quit. Take my handy dandy highlighter. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And wait a minute, I want a probability of uses drugs and tested what? Tested positive. Okay? I'm going to turn that down. Okay, so what do you do? You take your handy dandy highlighter, and I'm going to highlight the losers. I'm going to highlight them right there. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Okay? Everybody with me? Now, don't start thinking. Now, some of y'all are already starting. Wait a minute, I don't understand why you... No, you just do 
losers and you go all the way across. You don't you don't think. When you start thinking, that's when you're going to start getting them wrong. And don't try to make sense out of the table either. Don't try that either because then you'll get confused. All right? Now, what about the positives? Well, there you go. That's it. Now we're going to add everything up because that's what the rule is called, the additive rule. So we're going to add everything up. So here we go. Take my handy dandy mover. Now the other day I tried to move something that was highlighted and it moved the whole thing but left the highlight behind. So tell me what I did different there. I don't know. Appreciate the interaction, y'all. Thanks. Appreciate it. What is the total? You always got to have a total because the total number of cards is 52. The total number of sides on a coin is 2. The total number of sides on a die is 6. The total number of babies is 8. There's 8 sets of babies. So what's the total here? Well, let's see if we can add this. 90 plus 860 is dang old 950. Dang old 994. Dang old 1,000. Somebody check it for me. On the calculator, please. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, y'all just not going to talk to me. Okay. So everything's over what? 1,000. Okay, now just add up everything. So I'm going to take my green marker. Not my highlighter, but my green marker. And I know you're not going to be able to see it, but it'll, it'll be okay. And I'm going to add the 44 and the 6. And I'll put it in brackets because that's my going across that way. And then I'm going to use my yellow marker, which I know you're not going to be able to see, but just entertain the fault. Okay? Uh, plus yellow and that's going to be 44 plus what? Now I need some artists in here. Well, yellow that's not a primary, which green's not a primary color. Yellow is, but that doesn't make another color. It makes more of a lighter Oh, it's just, I'm talking to myself. I'm not going to talk to me, so I'm going to forget it. And I'm going to do it in blue. We'll do the overlap in blue. What are we going to subtract? 44. And that's the part people forget to do. Okay? So. What else does somebody steal out of here? Oh, stylus. Somebody took a stylus too. So, so far, in the last, what, week, a cable has been stolen, a mouse has been stolen, and stylus. I had to steal this from the music lady down there. I had to rough her up a little bit. She didn't know how to use it anyway. I know. I figured. All right. So, 44 plus 6 is what? 50 plus 44 plus 90. Well, think about it. 40 plus 90 is 130. And then add 4. That's 134. Minus 44. Well, that 44 taken away from that 34 is going to be 90. So 50 plus 90 is what? 140. Come on. I'm needing some interaction here. 40 plus 90 is... 130, right? Am I doing something wrong? Or is that 50? Okay, I'm sorry. 50 plus 90 is what? 140. Okay, now you got to get your calculators out for this, don't you? Please say no. What is, what's the answer? 140. 
Now, you need to go back and write a statement. What 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 have you just got? Four one four oh. What's that? You got a fourteen percent chance. Fourteen percent chance of having a loser and a positive drug test. All right. In other words, if you was to put the results, let's say John Smith, he he was uh, he uses drugs in his survey. He says he uses drugs and he popped positive. And you put that result on a piece of paper and you put it in a hat. And then Jesse Brown, he does not use drugs and he has a false positive. And they put that on a piece of paper and you put it in a hat. They're wanting to know if you put all them people, them thousand people, that thousand people in a hat or whatever it comes out to be, in a hat, and you put their results on it, what is the what is the chance or the probability that you'll get a person that uses drugs hitting positive and you have a what? 14% chance. Don't feel good about yourself. Now that's it. That, that's how easy the additive rule is. If you want to make it difficult, I guess there's somebody in here that can do that. I'm trying not to make it difficult. Now there is a problem that I like to show, and I don't think it's in here, and it is a test question because I love to put it on the test. And I love to give it as a homework problem because you can do like 15 different problems with one problem. And those people that make A's and B's, they like the problem because they can do a lot of practicing with it. Those that make C's and D's, they don't really care because they don't do any of the homework anyway. So just tell them that. It's the, as soon as I can find it. Some of you nursing people, y'all like it because it applies to your field. And I'm trying to find, I might have to go to an older book. Because you know what they do with things that, things that work good, you know what they do with them, don't you? Oh, well. Exactly. See it yet? Nope. Okay, hold on. Let me pull it up. See if I can Google it. Maybe it's faster if I Google it. No need to get mad and leave. Let's see. That's YouTube. That's the wrong place. Okay. Uh, additive. Oh, probability. Give me a second. 